So what is reflection? Well, reflection or reflective practice is a way of deliberately and analytically thinking about yourself, uh, studying your own experiences, your own responses, thought processes, your own actions and decisions. It's what we call metacognition or thinking about thinking. And it's such an important part of higher level study at university. And becoming more self-aware in this way helps you to learn more about yourself, your abilities and skills, what works for you, what doesn't work so well for you, uh, your strengths and weaknesses. But it also helps you to plan and progress. So to explore what you've learned and how much you've developed, to evaluate how you're going about doing things and see where you might be able to do them better. Making time to think about yourself in this very analytical, objective way isn't something that many of us do naturally very often, but it's such a useful habit to develop. It's great for being able to demonstrate your strengths, for example, in a job interview. It's good for understanding a bit better what's going on and why in a given situation so that you can respond more effectively. It helps you to refine your strategies and approaches for study or for work. It helps you evaluate your own decision making processes, including being more aware of what's influencing the choices that you're making. And it helps you to shape and focus your personal action plans so that you can track your own development against the goals that you set for yourself. So you're looking at the past so that you can be more aware in the present and inform your future. Reflection is very much about the process rather than just the product or end result. It's a demonstration that you can learn from your own experience and take charge of your own development. So it's a really important part of both learning to learn and also professional practice. So you can see why your lecturers might want you to develop this ability. They might ask you to do some reflective writing to help you to develop this as a skill and also to demonstrate to them the quality of your reflection and the kind of insights that you've reached. Writing is a great way of thinking out loud and articulating your thinking and exploring it in a bit more depth. Um, so reflective journaling is a great habit to get into anyway, but your lecturer might set you some reflective writing as assessment. Well, there's different types of reflective assignment, some of which mimic things like job applications or professional accreditation. Others are more about looking deeply at why something happened and how you might improve your response next time. Some look only at one single incident. Others might focus on a longer time period, like a, a module or a placement. But common to all of those different types of reflective assignment is your ability to analyse your own experience and draw conclusions about it for your own development. So in some ways, it's very different from the kind of academic writing that you might be used to. Reflective writing takes you yourself as the thing being studied. So you are the object of your own research and you're using your own experience as evidence. So it's very subjective and personal. In academic writing, you can't use your own lived experience to back your points up because it's just anecdotal. It's not objective or scientific. It can't be verified. But in, in reflective writing, though, you have to. You have to use your own experience as evidence for the points that you're making. And it means that unlike in academic writing, you can write in the first person and say, I. In fact, you can't really avoid it. And in reflective writing, you can also often be a bit more open. Reflective writing is different from academic writing, which presents such a polished version of your learning. It's the final product with all the rough edges smoothed out. But reflective assignments give a glimpse behind the scenes and acknowledge all the work that you did along the way, even the mistakes, the missteps, the accidents and the dead ends, which are normally invisible. The conclusions that you reach as a result of your reflection are personal and individual to you. So you can't really get them wrong because it's your own experience. But what the lecturers are assessing is the quality of your reflective thinking rather than the outcome. You're offering a commentary on your learning. And even if it didn't go so well, that actually provides rich material to reflect on. In some ways, reflection can be hard for us because it breaks some of those common rules of academic writing that we've all worked so hard to learn and to practice, but it can be quite liberating to write in a more personal way. But reflective writing does share some of the same requirements for higher level thinking as traditional academic writing does. It's a lot more than just telling the story of what happened to you and what you did and what you said. 
as well as describing whatever you're reflecting on, you still need to understand and apply wider reading to help you contextualize and analyze what was going on. You still need to ask yourself critically analytical questions, unpacking exactly what's happening and why. You still need to evaluate um, your decisions and offer reasoning and evidence for the choices you made and synthesize what's going on into conclusions and learning for the future. Your writing is still formal and professional, even if it is a bit more personal than usual. So if you've been set your first reflective assignment, you can be reassured it's not about getting the right answer. It's about your ability to take all of those higher level critical analytical skills that you've been learning at university and applying them to yourself.